Hello friends. What I've been exploring this week is the concept of deep listening. And of course we think of listening as opening to the outer world. But we can also bring this kind of deep, compassionate listening to ourselves. And during this hour-long practice, that's exactly what we'll do. So we kind of get the sense of listening with an inner ear of kindness and compassion. So when we move through the different asana, the different poses, and we find something which maybe is a bit sticky or tight, then we kind of listen into it or sense into that so that we can find out what we most need. Do we need to stretch a little more? Do we need to ease off? Do we need to rest in child's pose? Do we need to activate and strengthen? So bringing that inner ear of awareness to our practice. So let's begin with hands at the heart. There's a beautiful word in the Buddhist teachings, bodhicitta. And it's often translated as the awakening heart. So today we can think of our heart-mind as our inner ear, from which we listen, we attend. So we'll awaken this citta this heart-mind. Letting the arms rise up into the sky and just opening the face, the throat, the heart, the belly. So allowing your breath to lengthen. First of all, filling the belly, then letting it rise up. Lifting under the collarbones, expanding the ribcage. And then letting everything soften back down. Two more deep breaths, exploring that inner world. We often focus our attention on the belly center. That's where we can ground and connect. Today though, we'll move attention more up to the heart center. So exploring some back bends, some opening, a real sense of listening inwards through the heart and expanding to open our compassionate listening to the outer world as well. So let's take a deep breath in and then hold, just floating the attention on the chest and the heart and then exhaling out. And at the bottom, hold once more. Inhale up, feel the breath rising from the base. Hold and exhale down. Softening and releasing. We sometimes call this box breathing. So inhale up one side, hold, exhale down the other, and hold when we're empty. Inhale, fill up, pause. Exhale, empty out and pause. Inhale, pause, exhale, pause. Two more rounds in your own time. Jen, 
gently bringing the feet together and the knees into the chest. You can hold the top of the knees. So as we focus on the back bends, we will obviously focus on the spine. So let's start with some undulations where we can draw the cerebrospinal fluid all the way up and down each of the vertebrae. So as we inhale, there's an expansion, an opening into the front body. And as we exhale, there's a scooping under, really pulling the navel all the way back into the spine. place to balance where the spine is long and the feet can just lift off the ground. You may like to hold behind the back of the knees and gently letting one leg lift up and then and the other and then and both feet together and then and repeating one leg and the other and both legs. And now seeing if you can play with that without the hand. So lifting one, lifting the other, lifting both into our boat pose. Once again, if you need to touch down in between just to ease the spine, of course you're welcome to do that. So one side, the other side and then both together and this time hold both up into the air and open into our half boat just feeling the engagement all the way through the front of the body and coming back opening into half boat and back knees can stay bent or they can be straight one more half boat and back and release. So just strengthening the abdominals so that we can support the lower back. Our heart opening poses require lengthening through the spine. So let's cross the ankles now and coming onto hands and knees. Finding your box shape. And we'll take our usual cow pose, so inhale and drop the belly, feel that arch in the lower back. But then hold here for the exhale and see if the exhale can allow you to deepen a little more. And then inhale, come to neutral. And exhale up into our cat pose. And once again, stay here. As you inhale, feel the breath expanding through the back of the heart. And then the exhale takes you to neutral. Inhale, belly softens down. Exhale, let everything release with gravity. Inhale, neutral spine. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, opening through the back of the heart. Exhale, neutral. One more round, inhale, cow. Exhale, deepen. Inhale, flat. Exhale, cat. Inhale. And coming back to neutral. And resting onto the heels, reaching the fingers forward. And just settling in for a moment to our child's pose. So we'll Find our way here on various occasions. It's a beautiful counter pose for any back bends. Just allows the lower back to lengthen, the tailbone moving down towards the earth, and the forehead as well coming down until it might rest on the ground beneath. And then gently drawing your heart forward, like a modified upward dog, and exhale back. 
Just two more, feeling that rhythm. Bringing attention all the way through the spine and into the shoulders as the weight shifts. Back into child's pose. And this time as you come forward, let the right foot come forward too, between the hands. And finding again your box shape, so it's right angles between the legs and coming up. So resting the hands on the front knee. The back toes can be flat or they can be tucked. It's your choice. And feel that front foot pulling back and the back knee pulling forward. So we get this delicious stretch through the front of the hip. And then gently pull the abdomen in, rounding the back. And then inhale the other way, lifting the heart and moving forward a little bit into that front knee. Exhale, drawing in, really feel that engagement as you're pulling in. Inhale, gently let gravity take you forward and down. Third time, inhale. Exhale, deepen or draw in even further. And inhale forward where the hands can rest on the earth. Coming back into child's pose. Inhale forward. Exhale back. And then left foot coming forward. Once again, just finding those right angles, pushing down to come up. And pulling everything in on your exhale, really draw the navel back to the spine. Feel that stretch through the front of the right thigh and the hip flexor. And then inhale, lifting the heart a little. Exhales, drawing back, rounding the spine. And inhale. And see where your body is willing to go. So bringing that quality of listening to our body, its sounds, its sensations. Releasing the hands to the earth, back onto hands and knees, child's pose. And this time we'll just come forward once and back. And then the next time, tucking the toes and finding your first downward facing dog. The knees can be deeply bent. Draw the tailbone up and back and gently melt into the heart. So starting to bring attention now to the quality of length that's required for the back bends. So gently drawing tailbone away, pushing the hands into the earth, and then softly hammocking the spine. And float forward into plank. Back into downward facing dog. Forward into plank. Holding there just for a moment, strong thighs, strong abdomen, and lowering down using knees if you prefer, or chaturanga. Coming onto the earth and then lifting the hands, they're under the shoulders but they're not on the ground. Let the heart lift with your breath. Exhale, release. Feel the shoulder blades squeezing in, supporting the upper back and drawing downwards. Third time up. And release. And now let the hands Rest on the earth and lift just a little higher, finding your cobra and staying there for a moment. So a beautiful heart opening pose. Can we open that ear of the heart? What are we sensing? And release down. Just take a moment flat on the earth. 
maybe with an ear to the earth. Listening into the natural world. A world that doesn't always speak. And yet we can sense and learn and understand the language through which it communicates. And bringing hands under the shoulders once again, toes tuck, activate the thighs, the lower abdomen, and push down to come up. Back into downward facing dog. Let the right leg float up behind you. So normally we keep the hips flat to the earth, but let's lift a little higher today so that the hips open and then bring the heel to the buttock. You'll feel a stretch through the front of the right thigh. You might want to gaze under the right armpit and just feel whatever you feel. And then gently bring the legs straight up behind, the hips face the earth once again, knee coming in, and step forward between the hands. Dropping the left knee down, toes can stay tucked or flat, whatever you prefer. And once again, we're in our low lunge. So this time bringing hands behind you and interlace the fingers, pulling them down and feel how that allows the heart to lift and open, find that length through the spine, so gently pulling back through the abdomen and under the ribcage and then as you move forward, lift the hands just a little off that back thigh, maybe lifting the gaze. Feeling how it feels to open our cheetah, our heart, mind. Then softly releasing the hands, keeping the pose, and let the arms float skywards, open, and release. Hands to the earth. Step back, downward facing back. Deep breath, push the earth away from you, feel the tailbone lengthening, the whole of the spine long as the weight of the head drags the neck downwards. And then left leg lifting as high as it likes, opening into the hip, and then dropping the heel to the buttock, gazing under the left armpit. Feeling that stretch through the front of the thigh. And then gently bringing the hips to face the earth once again, the knee pulls in and stepping forward between the hands. The right knee drops now. Again, toes tuck or flatten, whatever gives you greater stability. Bringing hands behind. And just seeing if you can interlace the other way. We often have a dominant side. Just see if the other finger can come in front. And then a bro broadening through the front of the chest as the palms squeeze together, as the shoulders draw down the back. So pulling in momentarily, feel that stretch through the front of the right thigh and then softly deepen. Lift the arms a little, opening the heart, listening to the breath. An intimate listening. Then releasing the hands very slowly, letting them rise up. And now a sense of the outward listening to the world around us. And release. And
hands to the other back leg lifts and this time we'll step to the front of the mat inhale drawing the spine long on your flat back and exhale fold pulling up into the hip creases lifting into the lower abdominals and letting the whole spine hang lengthen down through the weight of the head and the torso and then bending the knees just enough that you can push into the earth and come up one vertebrae at a time like a rag doll. Let the arms float wide. Lift them into the sky and the palms come to touch. Urva Hastasana, just feeling the hands making contact, that gentle, tender touch. And then pushing the feet into the earth, let the hands rise. Let the gaze lift. Pull the tailbone down, let the heart lift. You may be in a little back bend. And then palms come down the midline. Samastiti he. The place to reconnect with our intention to listen deeply to listen with a compassionate ear and releasing the hands next to the thighs getting ready to bend deep into the knees for our Utkatasana so fingertips sweep the earth To start with, let's arch into the lower back, just to feel how that feels. Arms reach up, gaze lifts, and then draw the tailbone under. So lengthening the lower back, feeling the spine pulling in two directions. Hugging the thighs around the femur bones, feel your inner strength. And then bowing forward and down to the earth. Inhale, flat back, using the muscles of the spine to draw you up, even lifting the arms behind you, like Superman. And floating forward once again into your forward bend. Inhale, flat back. And exhale, the right leg back into lunge. This time we'll keep the back knee lifted if that feels available. You're welcome to put it down at any point if you want more stability. So when you're ready, push down to come up, the knee on the earth or lifted, and hands once again can rest on that front knee. Feel the front foot pulling back. The back hip or the right hip drawing forward. Find that engagement around the pelvis to hold you steady. And then once again, hands interlace behind the sacrum, gently drawing down past the buttocks towards that back thigh. And then lifting the heart. Maybe deepening the pose a little. And once again, softly release the fingers. Let the arms float wide and up and find this full, open-hearted expression. And release. Hands to the earth. Step back into downward facing dog. Feel the comfort of symmetry, both feet, both hands supporting you. And listening in to the different rhythm and sound of the breath. And then softly feeling your way forward into plank. And down. Maybe using knees or chaturanga, hinging the elbows back. 
and coming to the earth. So let's take some Shavadasana. We'll bring the hands back beside you and then turn the palms to face the ground. So you'll feel the front of the shoulders opening a little. And then gently lifting the heart. The hands can stay on the ground for now. Exhale down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. This time we'll inhale and lift. Lift the arms and lift the feet. Using the strength of the spine, all those muscles that run the full length of the vertebrae to hold us in this pose. And release. Maybe turning the other ear to the earth. And once again, listening in. And then hands coming under the shoulders once again. Tucking the toes, activate the thighs, pull up on the kneecaps, lift into the belly, and press up. And back. Downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. And then bring your back feet together so that the toes touch. And gently roll onto the edge of your left foot. So for now the buttocks are still up into the sky but you're just in this kind of side orientation. And then bring your top leg, you can bring it up just to be playful, but then bring it behind you so that it's rested on the ground and you can push with both feet to open into this heart, expanding wild thing, drawing the shoulder blade underneath to protect your upper body and then gently releasing back into downward facing dog. Floating forward into plank and take your vinyasa maybe through chaturanga or cobra or upward dog and back into downward dog. Taking a moment for the breath to lengthen and quieten like a gentle breeze. And then to the other side, so bringing the feet together and then rolling onto that sharp edge of the right foot. The left leg on top. You can lift it up to be playful and then step it back behind you. Pull the shoulder blade under so it's protected and opening into your wild thing. Expanding through the heart and release back into downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Let your right leg float up behind you and step it forward between the hands. So we're on the other side, we're going to push into the earth. Remember you can use your knee if that's more supportive or allows you to balance better. Or coming up into high lunge. The hands from now can rest on that front knee. And just pull the left hip forward as the, the right um, femur bone pulls back. And then hands interlace behind you once again. Just drawing down over the buttocks towards the thigh. Opening the chest and the heart. And then gently sinking, but keeping strong, stretching the mat between your feet. And lifting and opening the gaze. And if you'd like to, release the hands and bring them up into the full expression 
of this open-hearted poet. And release. Hands to the earth and taking the back foot forward to meet the front. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Bend deep into the knees, fingertips sweep. Take our next Utkatasana. So start with that strong sacro lumbar curve, the buttocks pushing out, and then pull the tailbone under to feel the length through the lower back. And straightening up. Palms come to touch, completing our one side. And down the midline. Listening to the breath. Listening to the heart. Deep, compassionate listening to our own needs. So that we then have capacity to listen and support the needs of others. Hands release to the thighs, knees bend. Let's take Utkatasana. Drawing the tailbone down, lifting the heart, and then forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Arms come back behind you like a shooting star. And coming down. Inhale, flat back. This time the left leg coming back. You can ground the back heel. We'll come into warrior one where the hips are still facing forwards. So feel that full kind of curve through that left leg like a spiral, the baby toe connecting down and then feel that spiraling so that the left hip can come forward as the right femur bone pulls back and we deepen. And then the arms float skywards again into this heart open pose. Listening to the breath listening to the needs of the body and release stepping back downward facing dog floating forward into plank and lowering to the earth rolling the shoulders back lifting into cobra exhale release the hands might need to move back a little further so that this time as you roll the shoulders you can lift the hips off the earth. Our upward facing dog. And then engage that lower band of abdominals. Put it in and back rolling over the toes. Finding your downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. Let the left leg float skywards. Step it forward between the hands. Grounding that back heel. We're taking our warrior one on the other side. So start steady and strong. Grounding the baby toe side of that back foot into the earth. Feeling the spiral as the right hip draws forward. The left femur bone pulls back. And then the arms open into the sky. Breathing in. Listening in. And release. We'll step back into downward facing dog. And now let the right leg lift. Step forward between the hands, but this time dropping that back knee. And put 
push down to come up. And gently move forward. And if it feels available to you, you can bring your left hand down. So either just move into a gentle twist with the right arm lifting to the sky, or take your right arm back and then lift that back foot. So to take the back bends, we need to feel long through the quads, through the hip flexors, all the way through the front of the body. So allow this first to lengthen the thigh muscles as you push the foot back into the hand but pull the knee forward just to engage. And release the foot, come into your twist and release. Stepping back, downward facing dog. Take a moment to breathe find symmetry, to let the heart expand in this resting pose, remembering the knees can be bent as much as you need, and then the left leg floats out, bring that forward between the hands, the back knee drops. Just bring hands onto the knee so that we can engage, pulling in, lifting under the ribcage, drawing the abdominals back, and then letting the right hand come to the earth, finding your twist. Let the left arm reach up to the sky. And you're welcome to stay here. Or you can reach that left hand back and then bend the knee until you reach that back foot. Sometimes we cramp here, so just go very gently. Remember we're listening in to the body's needs. So push the foot back if you've got hold of it and pull the knee forward. Really engage those thigh muscles. Listen to the breath. It will give you a clear message in terms of whether we're going too far or whether we can go a little deeper. So releasing that back leg, left your top hand, reach into the sky, just a gentle twist. And then returning to downward facing dog. So having stretched the thighs, having opened the heart and the shoulder blades and the front body, we can now float forward into plank, lower to the ground, and play with our bow pose. So rolling the shoulders back, bending the knees, and reaching for the feet or the ankles. And when you're ready, push the lower legs back and see if the heart is willing to lift. Feel your way in, sensing in, listening to what is available in your body this morning. Touching the earth, listening in, taking a moment for the energy that's released in the back bends to spread through the whole of the body. Enlivening, awakening us to increasingly subtle messages. And gently pushing back into child's pose once more. Your lovely counter pose for the back bends. Just feel that stretching through the lower back. Bring the breath 
right into the belly and the lower back. And then feel it rising up to the heart. forward, toes tuck, downward facing dog. Take a moment, take a breath. So we can get into wild thing in a different way. It takes a little more trust, a little more courage. So you're also welcome to do as we did before, to roll onto the side of the left foot, bring the right foot behind and open. Or if you'd like to try the other way, is to lift the right leg high, just as we did before, bend the heel towards the buttock, slowly lift that knee, and allow the body to turn and open and touch down into wild thing. And release, downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Moving through your vinyasa, just to allow any energy that gets stuck to free itself. And returning to down dog. Where again we can either roll onto the outside of the right foot, bring the left foot behind and open. Or we can lift that left leg high. Open the hip, bend the knee, heel to the buttock, and then gently dropping down behind a little moment of trust that the earth is beneath us. And now we can open our heart to the world around and release. Downward facing dog. Child's pose, settling back, listening in to the changing rhythm and pace of the breath, Lifting the torso, walking the hands back towards the knees. We'll come into our final back end. This is camel pose. So it can be just a little easier to tuck the toes under so that the heels are high. And then what I suggest is coming up and bringing the arms up in front, palms facing up. What we're going to do is take the arms back and you'll find that the shoulders kind of slot into the position that is most supportive for them. And then we'll reach one at a time, the arms down to find the heel. So you can make it a little bit of a dance to start with, palms reach up in front kind of a receptive pose, and then take them wide and back, touching down onto the heel, and then the other arm all the way wide and back, touching down. And then pushing the hips forward as if you were pushing against a wall, but breathing deeply into the lower back. So camel is about length, as much as it is about the shape, the curve. So really feel that lifting up into the heart. The gaze can stay forward or the head can rest back onto the shoulders. And 
to come out, release the head, take one arm, bring it back in front, and the other. And settle for a moment into this meditation pose. Where we invite ourselves once again to listen deeply, which means listening with openness and compassion. What is the heart saying to you right now? What needs of your own can you fulfill today? And opening your awareness into the natural world. A world that has a very quiet, whispered voice. How can we serve the natural world today? And then sitting to one side of your feet and bringing your legs or your right leg in front and over the left knee. So we're preparing for a twist, which is a lovely way to support the spine after the back bends. So hands on top of that bent right knee, going to lengthen the spine up, and then gently turn towards the thigh. So you can cradle that bent knee in your left elbow, bringing the right hand behind. Inhale and lengthen the spine. And exhale, maybe deepening. Just choosing where the neck wants to go. Gazing out to the side or even over the back shoulder. Remembering to use the breath. The inhale lets us lengthen, creating space between each vertebrae. And the out-breath gives us that little bit of extra space into which we can explore. And releasing the head first. And the torso. So you can either simply switch the legs or taking the disco twist, where we bring the arms round to the left, so the other way that we've turned, lift the buttocks, keep the feet where they are, and walk the hands round, and you'll find your way, sometimes, in the twist, on the other side. So the left knee is bent and lifted, the right foot is next to the buttock. Hands on top of the knee, we can just gently push down to lengthen the spine and then softly turning in, hugging your knee in the crook of the elbow and then maybe bringing a hand behind, lifting the heart and deepening to wherever your body allows. By listening deeply, we create a sense of trust. And then the 
body will release old places of tension, resistance, vulnerability. And we can explore deeper and deeper. And gently releasing once again the head first, the torso. Lengthening through the spine. And bringing both feet straight out in front of you. You can take the flesh under the buttocks, softly draw it back so that you can really feel yourself nestling into the earth with those sits bones. And sweeping the arms forward and up. And then gently round and down. And we'll take a few breaths here in Paschimottanasana, our forward bend. Just allowing the whole of the spine, the places that have been compressed, to lengthen. And let gravity support you as you listen your way into a different experience of the pose. Playing with the edge, knowing when to back off or explore deeper. And all the time, the gentle flowing breeze of the breath nourishes the body, the heart and the mind. slowly lifting up. After a backbend class, we want to take plenty of time in Shavasana because often the heart is guarded or armoured and when we open up we release kind of emotional material and, and energy that's been held stuck in place. So just moving your buttocks forward so that you can find a way to settle back into a replenishing Shavasana, covering yourself so that you feel safe and warm. Using this time of stillness to listen deeply both to our inner and outer worlds. The mind may get distracted. When you notice that it has, softly invite it back to that quality of deep listening.
when we're in touch with the sounds within and around us. It means we're in touch with the present moment. Training the mind to stay where we want it to be. Fully present, curious, fresh. And listening in to three more gentle breaths. Stretching the arms up and overhead, stretching the feet away from you, and then softly drawing yourself into a little ball and rolling to one side. Finding your way back up. And so today for our deep listening practice, we'll close with the three sounds of the bell. Allowing the sound as it radiates out to carry with it our dedication. So there may be people in your life right now who are struggling and our ability to listen deeply to them and their worries may allow a sense of space and healing to take place. So whenever we're called on to listen over the week ahead, seeing if we can listen deeply with compassion and sending out in ever widening circles. Namaste. Wishing you a wonderful